up, y'all? Malik Washington from Glen Burnie, Maryland. I got an art picture spot in high school, and I'm 16. Guys is the limit for him, so. I was like six years old. My first time playing was the Randallstown Panthers. I was playing receiver and like linebacker. I didn't play quarterback yet. That was like that was where, where it really all started. Um, you know, just going out there, have fun. So who got you started playing football? Probably my dad. Um, yeah, and right those times we were like six years old, you know, stepped out there for the first time. You know, he played football uh, all his life too. So, you know, it was kind of just something I kind of had to do and I had so much fun doing it. So it was, it was, it was, it was fun, but it was a little hard at times. Uh, I remember my first touchdown was a kick return and I was running down the sideline and I see my mom running down the sideline with me, <laughs> holding my, uh, holding my little sister trying to feed her applesauce at the same time. <laughs> Maybe that was a crazy memory. How did you feel when you first touched Oh, it felt great. It felt so good. Because, like, we weren't that good. <laughs> but I don't think we won a game. I didn't win a football game for, like, my first, like, four years of playing. Um, so scoring the first touchdown, it felt great. So what's, like, one of your favorite memories from, like, youth football? 100-pound um, playoff game against Crofton. I threw for three touchdowns, and I ran for one. That was probably the best game I had up to that point. And you know, of course, playoff game, youth ball. I just it was so fun. All right, first home game against Broadneck. Feel me, first time starting at home in front of the Rowdy Red. You know, all my teachers and stuff there, all my friends, my family, all that good stuff. Um, you know, it was it was a different experience. You know, I played against them last year, but I didn't start, of course, and it was at their place. But you know, coming out and starting, like having that whole crowd behind you, you know, rallying with you, it, it feels crazy. So, you know, my group walks out first, you know, the quarterback, special teams, and I'm walking out, and it's already kind of starting to get full in the stadium. Um, and I, I felt really good, you know, walking out, seeing everybody supporting you and stuff like that. You know, we bring the receivers out. We going through warm-ups, music's playing, everybody's feeling good. You know, I don't think there's any nervousness in the air for real after, you know, the first game, playing that big game. Um, but, you know, we're just, everybody's getting loose, everybody's getting hyped. We all go back in the locker room. We run back out together. You know, break down the banner and stuff like that, you can hear a crowd erupt. And it was just a great feeling, you know, you get that, that kind of burst of energy when you hear everybody supporting you. You know, we get to the sideline, national anthem, prayer, all that good stuff. Come out first drive, uh, hit a couple passes and stuff like that, you know, we're marching down the field, uh, running the ball, you know, airing it out, get a little bit of mix. Um, I take off for a play, and I think I get hit late, so you know, they add an extra 15. Um, we come out the very next play, you know, I throw an out route to my guy RJ and uh, you know he catches it, toe taps in the end zone and you can kind of hear everybody go crazy and you know first touchdown off your shoulders at home, it's a big weight, you know, let off your shoulders and you know you just feel like you have one of those days, I was just having one of those days. was kind of not a blur but you know it kind of moved by pretty quickly um offense was doing their thing you know defense getting stops um we got some guys in you know let them let them touch the ball you know go make plays with it stuff like that some younger guys you know some guys who haven't got in yet you know it was a good feeling you know getting some people in the end zone i haven't seen it um yeah i think we won that game i think 38 to 3 and uh you know good first home win now we on to the next What's up, Eli? What's up, Eli? What it do? You good? Yes, sir. 
How are you feeling? I'm feeling immaculate. <laughs> Hello, TV. Statement game. Wait. 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 Play again, come back and work another game. Real good. All right, these aren't charity reps. We're going, we're playing to win. All right, every snap. And um, that was fun, though, fellas. That was really fun. Now listen. Always. Take my hand. That's so good, That's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 I was hoping he didn't get caught, so I didn't want to What? Yeah. What? Okay. Uh, what inspires me to play football is uh, my family. You know, the love that they have for me, all the support they've shown so far. You know, the hours they put in that I also put in, you know, kind of trying to make it big. You know, it's just uh, trying to put my name out there. So I'm Kiana Texiera, Malik's mom, um, from right here in Glen Burnie, Maryland. Uh, as a child, I played softball as well as gymnastics, and Malik forgot this, but I also was a high school cheerleader. Um, so yeah. Okay, what about you? Um, <laughs> Daniel Washington, I'm Malik's father. Um, played football all my life, played basketball, uh, played baseball too. Um, so uh, if I would say the toughness came from that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I, to me, honestly, it seems like, you know, you guys were dual athletes. Both of you guys mm -hmm. were triathletes as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think with Malik, him being, you know, reported on the Baltimore Sun as a dual athlete, and not only just a regular dual athlete, but a very high-end and successful dual athlete, do you think that you guys have played a huge role in Malik's success as an athlete, being a dual athlete? Yeah, I definitely think so. Um, you know, like you said, we both play multiple sports. I think for us, we wanted Malik also to be able to play any sport he wanted to. Like, he played baseball only for a year. Mm -hmm. um, I think he could have been really great at it if he wanted to stick with it. But, um, you know, I think it was important for us that, you know, he have the opportunity to play whatever sports he wanted to play and continue to play multiple sports. You know, mm -hmm. we don't want him to, to kind of put himself in a box to only choose, you know, one sport. Um, there was a period of time he wanted to quit basketball, and we're oh, like, oh no, we're going to keep playing. You know, he was like, I'm not that good, I don't want to play, and it's like, no, we're going to fight through it, you're going to be fine, you're going to be fine. Yeah. And, and with that, that comes with like the management part of it too, like mm -hmm. managing being a, a dual athlete where you have to schedule a couple weeks in advance, mm -hmm. I'd, I'd imagine that would probably be you know, a big thing for you guys as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't care if he was the best badminton champion on the planet. <laughs> you know, it's going to be something you're going to work at. If it's something you like and you're into it, let's work at it. Yeah. Let's plug at it. So we never pushed him one way or another. Yeah. You know, football was a thing where we just tried it out. If he liked it, he liked it. If he didn't, he didn't. Same with basketball. You know, if it's something that you like, great. If not, 
You know, it is what it is when it comes to that. We, we're going to push you anywhere you want to go. Yeah. You know, so baseball was a thing for him until we found out that he could throw a ball from outfield all the way home <laughs> on one hop. You know, yeah. and it was like, oh, I didn't even know you could throw like that. Right. So yeah. that's when we switched to football and said, okay, let's try this out. Let's see if you can yeah. throw this football that yeah. long. You know, so that's how really how football came about. Him quarterback in any way yeah. was because of baseball. So that, when did you guys realize that? he was going to become an athlete and step into a, like not not only just become an athlete but become a leader in his world in that world yeah. um so i'll i'll say one moment i think that really stands out for me um aside from you know anything malik did um like i said he was in drama anything he did I, you know he did amazing at he's just one of those kids just natural um but i think in terms of sports a moment that stood out for me was his team he was at brooklyn park broncos and they had the opportunity to play at the Ravens Stadium. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Mm -hmm. um, and so it's halftime, Ravens Stadium, it's packed. He goes out on the field and very first play throws a touchdown pass. And it's like, and it was like effortless, right? It's like, I think 10, I think there were 10 at the time. Um, and it's like, holy, like you're 10 years old in front of all these people and where most would think, you know, you would kind of get shy or you would get scared. He was like, nope. Rolled out to the right, boom, touchdown. And I'm like, okay, yeah, my baby's a star. Like, mm -hmm. he's he's a star. I, I know for me it was more of him playing with the Maryland Heat, you know, and, and I say in every athlete, it has to click to you, mm -hmm. you know. Every kid don't have the dog in them when they first come out. Some naturally have it, some naturally don't, right? You know, he went through his trials, tribulations, dealing with football and basketball, and it was more when he realized that he could compete with older kids and he was actually good at it and it clicked to him that's when he started being the competitor and the dominant person that you see his personality was always there you right. know i don't care from you football up he always had the command of a team because mm -hmm. he always had to open his mouth and say something mm -hmm. you know and, and by him being so so much of an intellect he remembers a lot so it's like he knew where to put kids at he knew if you ran the wrong route he knew if he was in the wrong defense, like he knew the whole game plan. Mm -hmm. So when he played with Maryland Heat and them having the type of schedule that they had, once he realized that he could compete with kids from around the country, it, that competitor and that dog clicked in him, and that's what you see now. And you probably arguably had like one of your best games to talk about that five to seven performance that you had. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> So, you know, warm-ups, uh, starting there, you know, I felt good warming up. I felt like I was hitting. You know, sometimes you just have one of those days where you're kind of feeling yourself. came on the offense, um, we moved the ball down the field pretty well, connected for a touchdown. We came out, defense got a stop, we came out again on offense, went down, scored again. So then at that point we're like, okay, you know, this is this is gonna be a game. Let's go! Let's go! Great job! 
you know, coming out of halftime, I think we were up 28 to 7, I think, or something like that. They came down, they scored, they thought, oh, you know, about the amount of comeback. First play, we run the ball. Second play, 80 yard touchdown to Max. I think that kind of that kind of killed their spirits a little bit because now it's his first touchdown of the day. That was my fourth one throwing it. Oh, I had to be to him. And then um, later in the game, we're moving the ball down the field. Come down, throw a little jump pass, you know, for a touchdown. And that was five on the day. I think that's the most touchdowns I ever had in the game. So you know, walking off the field, uh, it felt good. You know, my teammates celebrated with me. <laughs> Where the hell was Five of them, Jewish? Five of them things? Oh, oh. 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 Bad time. Would you say that, that boosted your confidence even more going to the next one? Oh, definitely. It boosted my confidence something crazy. Because it was like, you know, this team's supposed to be this, that, and the third. And I came out there, you know, five touchdowns, you know, had a great game. Uh, I know some colleges in the stands watching, you know, that made me feel good. Ready? Ready? Oh, damn, come on. That's right. You're damn for his old. Carmen, Carmen, why you going to the game sign? Oh, he wants to sit. I feel like the leader aspect has kind of always been there. It's been like instilled in me since I was younger. Um, not even just on the field, but like, you know, off the field and stuff like that. And I think, you know, when guys have somebody they can like follow, like somebody they want to run through a wall for, it makes everybody play better. Um, you know, just going around before the game, I always talk to everybody, you know, each person by themselves and like, you know, tell them, you know, it's just one play at a time, make the best every opportunity and uh, go out there and have fun. And I think, you know, when everybody's having fun, it's, it's hard to stop a team. I like to have fun too, you know, I like to make people laugh. Uh, I'm outgoing, real outgoing, and you know, I can really connect with anybody. And I think that's why it's so easy on the football field to have people follow behind me. It's because it's not hard to connect with people. You know, like you go out there, you know, first couple of days of camp, first couple of days of spring workouts, meet new faces, you know, incoming people or people that played JV last year. And, you know, it's just, it's easy to connect. And then once you have that bond, it's kind of hard to break it. Was your biggest impact and growth from like last year to this year? Uh, Confidence, 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 confidence. Uh, last year, of course, I had a good deal of confidence, but I feel like, you know, moving in this year after, you know, about after the, Second half of week one and then like the whole week two, I was like, okay, you know, we can do this. So we got something here, you know, we can work with this. So what would you say were some of your goals for like incoming into this season? Um, you know, just prove everybody wrong. Like I said, nobody really believed in us, you know, to start start the year off. People think we're only going to win, you know, three, four games and stuff like that. We're not going to make the playoffs because we lost so much. That was a big chip, but I think all everybody showed it was, you know, kind of prove everybody wrong. Without it, we don't have to say nothing. We just go out there, we, we prepare during the week, and we do we show it on Fridays. Taken down by number three. Um, you know, homecoming game, coming to the game, uh, five and one, I think. Uh, you know, we had a pep rally that day, so everybody's energy is already high, you know, charged up, all that stuff. Um, you know, sit around before the game, listen to music, you know, just, just chill with your guys. Um, we come out that game, you know, first drive, touchdown, uh, defense gets a stop, we come out again, I think I throw a long pass to RJ. Um, you know, we connect for a touchdown. I think that was his, that was his first one, no, no, his first one, his second one of the year. You know, the longest one he had on the year. Um, you know, defense gets another stop like they've been doing all year. Um, we come down, you know, score again. And we want to talk about just feeling it. That was one of the games where I was really just like, I was feeling myself. You know, you're out there and you just feel like it's not a thing on the field that you can't do. It was it was one of those days. Um, you know, we come down again out of halftime, not at halftime, out of the quarter break. You know, we flip, throw another long pass to RJ. We, you know, march down the field, hit Jameson for a little flip pass into the end zone. Uh, I think that's touchdown number, number three in the first, in the first half. Um, so, you know, we, we come down again. Me and Max hadn't connected at this point yet. 
And then I think I threw him a long pass and he scored off of that. So there goes, uh, there was number four. <laughs> and then uh, I want to say it was a pop pass for number five of, of the first half. So, you know, we're going to, we go into halftime you know, with a pretty big lead. Um, you know, we come out and coach is like, you know, you got one more drive and then and then you'll probably be done for the game. I was like, well, you know, I already have five in the air. I might, I might as well get one on the ground. So, you know, we, we drive all the way down the field. Uh, we caught a play down in the red zone and it kind of, thing kind of just parted. And I just took off up the middle, you know, saw nothing but, but green grass ahead of me and, you know, hopped into the end zone. Uh, you know, it was, a, it was a good feeling, you know, six touchdowns on the day. Um, then after that, you know, I was done. I was sitting there cheering my teammates on and stuff while they were in the game. Six yards on the quarterback keeper by number four, Malik Washington. Your final score tonight, homecoming matchup, Cavaliers 54, Greyhounds 7. The Malik Washington, uh, great kid. Um, hard worker, uh, dedicated, committed, uh, but just overall a good, good human being. Um, I, I've had the, the privilege of working with uh, Malik, continue to work with Malik, continue to try to be there for him, try to be a mentor for him. Uh, but what he's creating, what he's doing, I just think the sky's is the limit for him. So Malik Washington, um, coming from me, your big brother, uh, keep doing what you're doing. I love what you're doing. Um, I'm here to support you. Um, congratulations on on building your brand and creating your brand. Uh, like I said, uh, sky's the limit for you. So, peace.